Hi, I'm Mike Hudson, Director of the Museum of the American Printing House for the Blind. Now, our mystery object this morning really is a mystery. So we're going to kind of walk through the evidence about what we think it really might be. So if you look in the catalog here at the museum, uh, this device is described as a two-stringed musical instrument. But I don't think that's what it is. Let's, let's describe it a little bit. So it's about, it's a, basically a hollow wooden box about 36 inches long and about six inches wide and maybe about four inches tall, right? And then in the sides, on both sides, and you can kind of see it as I'm looking at it here, are these, um, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dot, kind of almost snowflake-like uh, holes drilled into the sides. So there's two sets of those. And then on the top, we have a pair of steel strings that are stretched between a square-topped metal peg and down here almost uh, almost like a fret on a guitar, right? And there's some uh, red felt that cushions that uh, string where it hits that, that fret. And then, and this may be a little bit hard to see, but on top of the raised sides of the box are some paper strips. Now, and they're printed. They're in very poor condition, very dark and very tattered. But if you look at them closely, you can see that they say, um, second, uh, minor third, major third, fourth, sixth, seventh, and so on, down the length of the paper strip, okay? So what is this? Is it a dulcimer, a two-string dulcimer? That's kind of what it looks like, but that's not what I think it is. I think it's a tool used in piano tuning. Now let's look at our evidence. This. Uh, this piece comes from the Kentucky School for the Blind, from their collection, uh, and um, the, let's look at these pegs. Notice the pegs down here on the end, they are square in shape. Now behind me is the piano that Stevie Wonder played on uh, when he was at the Michigan School for the Blind in the 1960s. And if we look very closely inside that piano, at the piano pegs, they're identical to these square pegs that's on this device. You use a, a tool called a piano hammer, which is actually more of a wrench, to adjust those pegs and adjust the tension on your wires, right? And then those paper strips, they refer to chords. Chords uh, like you might play on a guitar or chords like you might play on a piano. Now, uh, piano tuning as a, uh, a vocation for blind students began to be pushed uh, as early as 1836 at the first school for the blind in Paris, France, where Louis Braille went to school. Um, in the United States, it starts being taught a little bit later than that. At the school for the blind here in Kentucky, they hired their first teacher of piano tuning in 1891, a fellow named Frank Washington. And after that, uh, for many, many years, one of your options in the vocational training pro program at KSB was to learn piano tuning. I think what we're looking at here is a tool they devised over at KSB to teach those students how to set the intervals between two adjacent strings on a piano. Now this is a pretty simple setup. Pian tuning a piano is a lot more difficult, but with this you could sit in the classroom and do it in a controlled environment. So piano tuning is not something that we teach most kids that are blind today, but it was one of those things that was pushed a lot um, for uh, kids who went to the traditional residential schools for the blind all over the United States. And this is kind of an artifact from that era.